back here live at the Waterfront Village with my friend, the zombie, Jonathan. You're looking good. Jonathan just got an awesome face paint job. What do you think? I like turtles. All right. Who, who likes good news, everyone? Then good news, everyone. What's going on, everyone? It's Nina Infinity. Welcome to my channel on this Friday. It's Good Friday. It's Good News Day. And I'm so excited to be here to report some much needed good news because I know we could all really use it. There's always something going on in the news that's uh, kind of crazy. Uh, you know, there's earthquakes, there's war, there's uh, all sorts of weird stuff going on. But there's also good things. And that's what I do on this show. I try and make sure they the world gets balanced out in terms of bringing news to you because there's always good things happening too, but we don't usually focus on those things. And that's what I like to do on this show is focus on all the good that is going on in the world because it's important. And I'm so happy to be joined by all of you. So if you are here in the chats, whether you're on YouTube, Rumble, on X, whatever, make sure you leave a like, comment, and all that good stuff. Uh, because it helps the algorithm and the show grow. So thank you so much for being here and uh, and all that good stuff. So thank you. And before we get into it, uh, I've got a massive early super chat here from Local Hero Cycling. So thank you so very much for the a uh, 100 pound big ones uh, here. Thank you so much. It says some newly printed Scottish currency to start the stream. It might still be wet. No worries if it doesn't happen, but all female held ever stream would be so cool. Um, so if some of you guys might not know. Uh, I'm bit, I've been playing this uh, game recently called Hell Divers, uh, especially with some some of your favorite YouTubers, maybe like Yellow Flash, Anna, that Star Wars girl, Raging Rhino, Mr. Bug, Tom B, who's probably in the chat. Uh, we we're all we've all been playing. There's a lot of people playing this game. It's a really good one, and it's been really really fun. And I totally thought that we should get an all female Hell, Hell Divers team. So I've been actually trying to work that out. Uh, maybe get like Kara or X-Ray Girl and Anna because um, you can only have four on the team. So like with me, uh, it, that would make four. So maybe we can make something happen. I've been trying to do that. Uh, but, you know, there's always a timing and scheduling and everything like that. But I I've, I've definitely we're on the same wavelength. So uh, thank you for the idea. And uh, I'm going to try my best to make this happen. Um, but thank you for this uh, very generous super chat to start the day. Uh, thank you so much. And then over on Rumble, uh, we've got Mr. Braz Monkey as usual. Hang on a second. Where? There it is. There it is. I had to had to do this again. Mr. Braz Monkey coming in. With a ten dollars thing, happy Friday for the Japan Fun. Thank you so very much, sir. Here's to your brazziness. And um, mm. drinking that iced coffee, guys, because it's really hot in Cancun. Uh, so thank you. By the way, uh, local hero. I just wanted to let you know, also. Speaking of Scottish currency and just being British slash Scottish from the great UK and beyond, um, I have a new show called Words Are Hard. <laughs> and uh, I've been doing British words with Tomby. The first two parts are out on the channel. You, you guys should all check it out. It's good fun. Um, it's been It's been very interesting. I'm just wondering, maybe I can get local hero on one of these days. You're going to have to give me your email or something so I can email you and then maybe have you come on and teach me some Scottish words with your Scottish accent. Because, uh, you know, sometimes I, like Scott, Scottish words and the accent especially is difficult. So that would be a fun show. I got to find some Scottish people. Speaking of which, if you're interested, in the show leave a comment down below of the comments for words are hard and let me know what content creators you want me to 
work with like if somebody you know has that like an interesting accent or somebody's interested like interesting that you want me to work with and co collab with on this and the words are hard uh make sure you suggest them in the chat and the comments so that i can i can take it down because i was like hmm who else can i hit up for this uh so i've been i've been trying to think of think of people so help me out with that guys um hang on for one second Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me check something here. Um, hang on a second. I think I'm on the wrong mic. I hope that's better. I hope that's better. Is that does that sound okay? A local hero says, Carrie wants me to speak about woke creeping into cycling, but I'm nervous. I'm a nervous wreck. Dude, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. It's going to be good. Uh, so you're going to have to email me. I don't even know. Do you have an actual channel? You're going to have to email me and let me know what your channel is. Yes, better, better. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for pointing out that I have uh, boomered the beginning of the stream. Uh, thank you. Uh, you're going to be just fine. And Carrie's awesome. It'll be a good, it'll be a good show. I'm sure of it. Uh, Spike says, I love it, Nina. L great shows uh, for the words are hard. Thank you. Uh, Psychotic Mongoose just gifted a membership to a lucky recipient. Um, if you are that lucky recipient. You know, let's say thank you to Mr. Psychotic Mongoose. Uh, he's so cute. You don't look psychotic at all. <laughs> Nina did a Gary. I did. I boomered it. I boomered it. StreamYard changed the mic setting. It never happens. Like that barely ever happened. I streamed yesterday. Nobody, nobody changed the mic setting. <laughs> uh anyways uh thank you again for all the support you guys you guys are so so awesome um okay let's start the show we've got a lot to talk about and we've got to start the show today with some amazing archaeology news because we haven't done some for a while and this was really interesting to me so let's start here Ming Dynasty tomb of an imperial official discovered in exquisite state of pre preservation. Ooh, look at this picture. This is the uh, this is the entrance to the tomb. Hold on, let me blow this up so you guys can see better. Look at that. That's so cool. Look at the carvings here. Very beautiful. A tomb dating to the middle of the Ming Dynasty has been excavated in the Chinese province of Shangxi. Uh, Shangxi. See, I need somebody Chinese for the words are hard, so we can do we can do these kind of words. Uh, Shangxi sounds like Shangxi, like from the movie, uh, revealing. A wealth of exquisitely preserved funeral, uh, funerary objects that tell a story of imperial life. Belonging to a court official, even the exterior facade of the tomb is in an excellent condition, and Chinese archaeologists state the discovery is exponent, uh, exceptionally rare. Wang Luo uh, had great taste when he administered the city of Xingzhou, on behalf of the Imperial Civil Service, and this is reflected in the wealth of wood and ceramic objects that decorated his tomb, inscribed in his honor, entrusted by the Ming Dynasty to serve the royal court as a palace official, read his coffin, and of tan wood painted with diamonds and flowers. All around the tomb were signs of high office, an ornate wooden desk and chair sat in one of the chambers, on which were candlesticks, incense burners, painted wood figurines, ink stones, brushes, and brush holders, a glorious chair of lacquered wood, 
uh, wood gold uh, with golden gold and black designs had a dragon image set behind uh, sat behind the desk. That's so cool. I mean, it's so Chinese. Uh, that's awesome. Um, other tables had ceramic and stone bowls and pots and their great state of preservation. Given the appearance that it wasn't uh, long ago that meal was shared on them. Uh, here is the, the actual tomb. Wow. So crazy. Uh, this is the on the right is the coffin believed to contain the remains of the official. So this one here. And then this is the table and the chairs, the ceramic items that the, I guess the table and the chairs collapsed after all this time. Um, it's a it is rare in Zhangzhou. And even the entire province that provides precious physical information for studying the local Ming dynasty, tomb shapes, social life, and burial customs, wrote scientists in an announcement about their discovery. The tomb was found as part of a monumental discovery in Xinfu district that identified a sort of valley of the officials to borrow from the famous Egyptian Valley of the Kings, 66 tombs dating as far back as nearly Neolithic, uh, Neolithic Long, oh my God, I can, I can say these words, Neolithic Longshan culture through to the Warring States period and onto nearly all of the most important imperial dynasties, including Han, Han Tang, Jin, uh, Yuan, Ming, and King, uh, Qing dynasties, covering around 1,500 years. They were discovered during the realignment of China's National Highway 108, and Wang Lu's tomb was found on a brick ter uh, terrace near the village of Hexitao. Uh, here is uh, more pictures of the... Look at the beautiful art on this. Wow. That is gorgeous. And here's the chair. Magnificent. Look at the, look at the embroidery. Is it called embroidery if it's on a chair, like on wood, like tiny art? It's not embroidery. Carvings? Little carvings. Shaped like an additional uh, addition sign, the ex exquisite stone doors and uh, portico are carved with in Intricate uh, interlacing flowers. A corridor runs to a central chamber, the length of which is around 75 feet. Nisha stand on a side uh, on each side of the chamber, and larger rear chambers containing the desk and most of the uh, funerary goods also included a stone cell uh, with Wang's uh, epitaph, which contains some curious life uh, advice carved in the Zuan script, as well as the personal information. Uh, quotes, those who have borrowed money to become prosperous should not be arrogant. Wow, that is a really good saying. That's a really good saying. Uh, the epitaph read, adding that Wang was the third youngest brother of a famous uh, palace inoch named Wang Ji. Wow. My goodness. I just love history. So fascinating. It's so fascinating. And you might be wondering why I cover uh, these kind of topics like uh, archaeology if you're new to the show. It's because I think that we can learn from uh, our past and uh, provide that knowledge to the future generations so that we don't repeat the same mistakes. Uh, that's why I love history and archaeology and all of that good stuff. I think it's fascinating. Uh, it's really, really cool. Very cool stuff. Um, here we go. Uh, Cocked over on Rumble says, a little Rumble love listening over lunch. Oh, thank you. Let me share that. Uh, here we go. Thank you so much for saying that. That is very sweet. I hope you're having a good lunch. What you eating? I just love history, you guys, and I like to share it. I like to share what I love with all of you. It's fascinating. Fascinating. What's up, Wolverine Snicket? Another fellow player of uh, Hell Divers. Hello, hello. Engravings. That's what it is. Engravings. Okay. 
when you're when it's on a wood. It's not carvings, it's engravings. See, I'm learning even how to see stuff like say stuff like that. Uh, TZ Burton says the Middle East has great history. Everywhere does. I mean, yes, of course the Middle East does too. Everywhere does too. Like England has so much history, China, Africa. I mean, everywhere. Uh, the earth is full of history. South America, where I am, Mexico, the Mayans. Uh, it's it's fantastic. The earth is just the most fascinating uh, planet been around for a long time and there's a lot that's happened on there okay here we go all right next story we're gonna come back down to or, or come back to present day uh and this is uh actually <clears throat> in the uk this 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 uh bit of news here which I thought was really cool. This is a, a little bit of Easter kind of news because, you know, you guys, as you guys may know, or you should know, <laughs> Easter was last week. Uh, and so this was a, this was an interesting little uh, news here. Small town grocers Easter egg mistake has turned into an inspiring national charity drive raising thousands. Uh, so this is the, this is the, this is the very lovely good human that's doing uh, awesome things. Let's go to the smaller thing here. On an island off the coast of an island, a local grocer's big error turned into a successful national charity event. Dan Dapid wanted 80 chocolate Easter eggs for the shelves of, of Sinclair General Stores on San, uh, Sanday, one of the Orkney Islands. Wow, Orkney Islands. I feel like I have to look that up. I don't exactly know where that is. But accidentally ordered 80 cases of, <clears throat> excuse me, 80 cases of Easter eggs totaling 720 uh, confectionaries for a total island uh, population of 500. Wondering what, what he was going to do with the excess, uh, his heart overtook his mind and decided to raffle off groups of 100 uh, with proceeds going to the Royal National Lifeboat Instit uh, Institution. RNLI, uh, the largest of the lifeboat services operating around the uh, coast of the British Isles, which which rescue dozens of people and vessels every year. Uh, it provide uh, it, it proved to be a huge hit on Sand Day, uh, with three thousand pounds being raised to win batches of hundred eggs. It was so popular that in the ult uh, ultimate irony, David had to order more chocolate eggs. We actually took a delivery of eggs yesterday because we ran out. We needed to buy more in the end. People have wanted them signed and all sorts, said uh, Mr. Daffod to The Guardian. Once word spread a bit, I was invited to talk on local radio. I thought it's not bad enough uh, to be laughing stock on the island, but to be an over uh, all over Orkney. Uh, there he is again with the chocolate eggs. What a lovely person. Uh, from the shores of Albion, it carried across wor a world media with the grocers soon receiving stacks of letters from people as far up a field as Singapore, writing to say how inspirational he was. Many of the chocolate eggs were manufactured by Nestle, who contacted Mr. Daffod uh, with the pro uh, a proposal that they would match any donation received for the RNLI up to 10,000 pounds with the aim of raising 20,000 pounds by Easter Sunday. It's incredible to see how a simple mistake can turn into an opportunity to make an, a positive impact, said Beth Lucas, the marketing director of the confectionery at Nestle UK and Ireland in a statement. Together, we aim to raise up to 20,000 pounds for the RNLI and the contribute to the invaluable work they do. Daffod said that, uh, that if, that even without the help of Britain and Nestle, the immediate community on the Orkneys uh, had purchased so many raffle tickets that they won 300 of the eggs, showing how close-knit and big-hearted his local community is. Oh, how sweet. I love local stuff, like local hero, local communities. I love local communities and just human connection and how all of these people just came together to make uh you know something good come out of a uh, of an error like a, it, i guess the error was serendipitous 
so it was a serendipity thing serendipitous uh it was a it was a happy accident uh so there you go uh what a what a cool uh little story i love that what's up ian hi shane dan uh everybody's darren everybody's here hello hi you guys very very cool very very cool i like that i like that story uh, and then speaking of easter um here is this is what happens when you try to take a family photo but somebody always makes a funny face or just doesn't want to be just doesn't want to work with a camera like it's just it's really hard to get everybody to be like you know let's just get into the picture guys just get into the picture <laughs> mom's easter photo shoot and <laughs> endeavor with dogs turns into a comedy show this is hilarious here we go sit 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 let's stay sit leave it ready leave it leave it leave it leave it leave it Leave it. Oh, leave, it. Leave, it. <laughs> leave it. 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 She doesn't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Leave it. Sit. Why do I gotta do this? Stay. What is happening? Leave it. Sit, leave it. Ah. <laughs> leave it. Leave it. That's leave it. Other dogs just giving up. Like this oh, one's just like, I just, I'm, I just, I'm just over this. I, I, what, this is what happens when a photo shoot goes real bad. I mean, you try. You try to make things happen and it just, it just doesn't you try your best. There's such great dog, gold dogs, golden retrievers are so funny. They're just so sweet. So very sweet. I mean, all dogs are. So many dogs are just so great. Um, okay, this is uh, the next story here. And this story was really weird. Like, I was like, I've never heard of this thing before. Uh, and I like how, you know, I, I just like how it, kind of innovative it is. Uh, it's it's weird. I've never heard of such a thing before. Uh, so I, ha I had to cover it. Uh, it says, teenagers turned plastic bags into sleeping mats for San Antonio's homeless. Uh, now, where did this go? Okay, here it is. 50,000 plastic grocery... <laughs> Roughly 40 to 50,000 plastic grocery bags have made a huge difference thanks to Teens Give Back, SATX. High school students are using them to make sleeping mats for San Antonio's unsheltered residents. It's crazy. Having a bed to go home at night after a long day of work or a long day of school. And Good humans. The that that brings us. That's why Addie Roberts wanted to take matters or plastic bags into her own hands to make this. Good job. When we hand those over to the clients that we work with, uh, again, it's, it's invaluable. I mean, it provides warmth. It provides, you know, ability to stay dry, um, to stay away from bugs. Um, so, you know, all of that matters to somebody who's sleeping unsheltered outside. It's Rex true. Bryan with Sam Ministry says in some temperatures, these mats could save lives by keeping people off the ground. But making one take 700 to 900 bags. That's a lot of bags. 15 to 20 hours. And you're going to poke your thumb through. So your thumb will end up being inside of the bag. Roberts gave me a crash course on how it's done. And you have it kind of like a T. And then you're going to get that same bag and put it through the handles. And then you're going to pull it. Then you get to weaving. Pull this part through. Mm -hmm. All the way. There's a lot All involved in this. And then you keep another through. loop. Yep. And then you just keep pulling through. To get to this. Wow. 
Now it's second nature for Robert and her teammates, but it did take some practice. I, I didn't really see it at first, and uh, I didn't see it for the first all the steps, until it was <laughs> but once it was made, I thought it was really cool, and it was. Oh, I love mats, the honesty. The says they made fifty mats thanks to neighborhood bag drives, but a recent partnership with HEB gave them eight thousand bags, allowing them to create ten mats in just one month. It's just good for them. Really nice feeling, like even if you're really tired, it's like okay, well, I did something good. Now they hope to keep the momentum going by bringing in new volunteers, John Paul Barajas, and then yeah, start like cool. making the chain. Case set. News. That's awesome. Good for them. I love that. I love that they're being so uh, creative with it. Now, I, I was like, I didn't know that you could do this with plastic bags, but apparently it's a thing. And here is um here's also another video that covers the same kind of thing. Uh, and this, I thought this was really cool. We're gonna watch this so you guys can learn better how to make a blanket out of plastic bags. Here we go. You can take any white garbage bag and make it into an essential item that can be used by one and all. My name is Joanne Husband, and I'm here today to introduce you all to some of the hardest working ladies I've ever met. They Aww. are the Nanaimo Harbor City Crafty Workers, and they make a huge variety of things. I'm Terry Wolfarth and we are the bag ladies and starting making bag bags ladies. out of plastic bags. I love First them. of all, you get our bags and you need to fold them up first to cut them to make your yarn. So you fold them like this and then you fold it in half again. You fold it in half again. Then we will cut off the top and cut off the seam at the bottom. I got the idea off the internet. Some ladies in Australia started doing this. It's butterfly it effect of social media. Thing. And depending how thick you want your, your mat, you make wider strips. These, these ladies are doing it way more pro than those our strips kids were. And we join them together. Just loop them through and pull them tight so they make a nice neat join. And then we just keep joining all these loops and we roll them into our ball, which is called plarn because it's plastic it's yarn. It's plarn. Then we start to crochet with them. We start with just a chain and we that try to make wild. them 36 to 42 inches wide. So it will be a sleeping mat. So wide enough for different sized people to, to sleep on. The bigger Aww. the crochet hook, the, the thicker the yarn, the, the, the wider the strips are, the thicker the yarn will be so it'll make up a more cushioned mat. And with the finished one, we put Look we'll, how nice we'll crochet this a strap, is. just a chain on each end to make a strap. They got straps so and everything. Also crochet a handle on it. And then that way they can be rolled up, they can be slung over your thing and packed easily. And they're very light. They're That's very so warm. Nice. They'll keep you dry. They keep the... Um, the warmth from, from you know, if you're laying on ground or cement or whatever, they help keep you warm. So they would be great for the homeless, which is what we would like them for. So if people would like to learn how to do this, we would welcome anyone who would come and help make us mats for the homeless. Well, there you go. What a, what a genius idea. I love it. I, I absolutely love it. Uh, and I love uh, this comment right here. Uh, Shane G says, now I'm going to go make twice as much as garbage to help these guys out because I care. You're such a good human. Isn't Shane G a good human, guys? Uh, and Spike and Madness says, where's Plarn Witch? <laughs> Aw. Yeah, Pl Yarn Witch would have enjoyed this story. I'm sure when she'll, I'm sure she's going to rewatch it. Or like playback when when she watches, she'll see Plarn Witch. That's funny. <laughs> uh, oh my god, make a giant Pikachu for Kara. That would be funny. You would need a lot of yellow plastic bags though. Or I guess you could paint it after. Uh, exactly. Paul Star Echo says, great initiative. Plastic bags are one of the worst things for marine life. Exactly. You're taking something that uh, is is 
you know, creating terrible waste on the environment and you're, and you're using it to help people. Uh, I like the initiative a lot too. What's up, John Edgar? How you doing? Uh, what's up, Stop Brad? Good to see you. Uh, so yeah, there we go. Very good stuff. Very good stuff. Um, now. This next story, a few people sent me this story uh, and I want to cover it, even though uh, it's one of those bigger YouTube channels and stuff like that. I don't mind covering stories like this. I think what they're I think what this person is doing is great. Uh, and I, I love stories like this. I, anytime anybody gets uh, helped in this way and the smile on this kid's face just makes just makes everything. It's just, it's just everything. Uh, so here it is. A young cancer survivor's dream comes true at Philly's opening day. In a heartwarming display of kindness and generosity, Zachary uh, Dernowski, uh, known on social media as MD Motivator, brought joy to a young boy's life by fulfilling his dream of attending a Philadelphia Phillies uh, opening day. Um, Der uh, Dernowski uh, whose mission is to spread positivity and kindness through small acts, has captured the hearts of millions with his inspiring social media videos. From surprising strangers with monetary donations to providing support to those in need, he has made his life mis mission to make a difference. Last week, uh, he took to his Instagram story asking his followers if there was anyone he should be he should surprise during his visit to Philadelphia area. That's when Lauren, the month of seven, uh, the mother of seven-year-old Samuel, reached out to, to him. Samuel who, Samuel, who recently underwent brain surgery and had finished chemotherapy in January, uh, had a burning desire to attend a, uh, uh, the Phillies opening day. In a touching collaboration between uh, Darren Whiskey and Lauren, they uh, orchestrated a surprise for Samuel while he was host, uh, hosting a lemonade stand to raise funds for tickets to the game. That is so sweet. Uh, little did Samuel know that he was in it for, in it for a surprise of a lifetime. As Samuel shared his journey of overcoming cancer, Journal Whiskey unveiled a gift beyond his wildest dream, $1,000 in cash and tickets to the Phillies opening uh, day. Uh, accompanied by his family and Darren Whiskey, Samuel experienced a day filled with magic and surprises at the ballpark. The Phillies organization treated him to an unforgettable experience that included time on the field and the special meet and greet with players. And here is the video. How much is the lemonade? One dollar. What do you raise money for? Opening day tickets. What's your name? Sam. I'm Zach. Nice to meet you, man. Who's your favorite team? Oh, Phil. What was that on the back of your head? I had brain cancer. When did you have oh. brain cancer? Uh, January. And how are you now? Good. How do you stay so strong? My doctors, they helped me through it. What keeps oh. you happy? Getting better. I don't have chemo and radiation. No more chemo? No. How much are the tickets for opening day? Like a couple hundred dollars. Can I actually buy a whole jug of lemonade from you? Sure, you want to buy all of it? How much for it all? 20. 20 bucks for all of it? Yeah. Can I give you... A thousand bucks cash. <laughs> He's like, what? You sure? Hundred percent. Thank you. And I gotta you give sure? you one more thing. You gotta read this one. Okay. Congratulations on behalf. Major League Baseball, we are inviting you to opening day game. You will get to meet players and go to the field before the game. Congratulations. Thank you. Love you. Aww. Love you too. I'm going to the end. Let's go, Philly! What's up, man? You made it to Philly! Oh, this song is totally gonna this get clean, but I don't even care. Give me a hug. Hey, you're strong. You know that? Be cancer, guys! He beat cancer! Amazing! Little warrior! That was awesome. I love that story. Uh, what a good human for making it happen for him. Absolutely. Just amazing, amazing story. Um, EVS was there. That's funny. I, I saw that he was, he was at the Phillies game. That's funny. He must've seen this kid. That's so cool. <laughs> Ian. Oh my God. That was amazing. It was amazing. I love it. I love it. Yes, F cancer indeed. 
I, I agree. Uh, speaking of F cancer, there is another cancer story. This one isn't as happy as the other one, but I still wanted to share it because it's about the thought and the humanity behind the story um, that is really, really important because uh, life is hard. Sometimes life is really, really hard. And it's these kind of uh, people that make life uh, just better. Uh, so here is a, uh, here's the next story. Uh, I'm sorry if it's emotional, but that's life. Uh, restaurant owner drops everything, drives nearly six hours to fulfill dying woman's last wish. Uh, this is an incredibly uh, heartfelt story here. Uh, and here a it is. A last meal and a moment of kindness. A woman in West Virginia wanted her favorite food from an Outer Banks restaurant. So the business owner drove more than six hours to make her final wish come true. And your side's Raven Payne has this heartwarming last request. This is a story of an act of kindness clearing away a cloud of grief. Heather Bowers feeling her life slipping away made one last request. A meal from Mama Kwan's, a restaurant six hours away from her. So her best friend and staff here banded together to make her dying wish come true. I don't think he realizes like what he did, how kind Aww. and how much that meant to the family. Mary Simmons tells me late February, her best friend Heather Bowers was at the end of her life after a long battle with cancer. Rest in right peace. out of the gate. It was stage four. She did. Um, I mean, what she went through in three and a half years is is like would have brought down the strongest man. She says She's in the better place. Devastatingly worked a little too well as it was killing the tumor. It was destroying the rest of Heather's cells on her deathbed. Heather had one last wish, a pork plate from Outer Banks restaurant Mama Kwan's. But how could Mary make it happen? They lived six hours away in West Virginia. I knew that it was a long shot. She calls me back about five o'clock. She says, Kevin already has it packed up. He's in the Aww. car and he's on his way there. And I said, what? Mama Kwan's owner, Kevin Sherry, says he didn't think twice about making the long drive for a customer in need, although it was hard on him emotionally. About halfway up, I had uh, human uh, right here. I turned the radio off and had to talk to myself of saying, you can't walk in here like this. You've got to walk in with uh, like a little bit of sunshine from the Outer Banks. He made it, but tragically, Heather died the very next night. Mary telling me Kevin's actions showed her there are still genuine, kind people in this world. I, I just think maybe, maybe if people see that kind of kindness, it'll start spreading. That's the hope. He made her smile, one of her final smiles of her life. Kevin says he plans on making a $1,000 donation to the hospice care center up in West Virginia that took care of Heather during her final moments. Amazing. Until Level Hills, Raven Payne, to on your side. I told myself I wouldn't cry again after hearing the story, but man, this is a uh, this is what humanity is about. I love I love people like that. He he went through so much to get there, and she had her last meal, and now she's in a better place. And uh, man. Sometimes it's really rough. Sometimes it's really rough, but I'm sure it meant everything to the family that she got her last wish. And what a good dude for doing that. Absolutely, absolutely um, a good person, a good human. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't, I didn't think I was going to cry. <laughs> I try to vet these stories so I don't cry on camera. <laughs> but I'm human. <laughs> uh... We got a super chat here from Glass Mama 4201 Thank you for the $4.99. says, hey, Nina, I'm 24-7 care partner for Rad uh, qua Quadriplegic Dude. Oh, Quadriplegic. Quadriplegic Dude. And look forward to every Friday shift uh, now thanks to you. I need good news. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. You are so welcome, and thank you for saying this, because that means everything. Um, this is why I do this show, so that uh, people can get just a little bit of hope in their in their lives. So again, thank you so much for saying that. It means everything. Thank you. Oh, Spike, thank you. Now, now you guys are all going to start making me cry. Uh, says, love you, Nina, and love this show. Thank you. Uh, 
try to make it good. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. Okay, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. We're going to watch something happy now. I promise. I promise. Thank you, Spike. It means everything to me. Um, here is a, here's a good medical story. Uh, this is, this is awesome. Uh, because, you know, as much as, uh, as much as sometimes the medical industry sucks, sometimes modern medicine can be amazing. Uh, and this is one of those stories. Miracle surgery reverses blindness in three-year-old in a remarkable turn of events. Uh, Khadija Chandri, a three-year-old girl diagnosed with leper cognitional ambroasis for man. I cannot say these medical words, has defied the odds and regained her sight thanks to a groundbreaking gene therapy procedure. There she is, the lovely little girl, uh, born with a condition that threatened to rob her of her vision. Before she turned four, Khadija's future seemed uncertain until she became one of the first children in the world to undergo a pioneering keyhole eye surgery at Evelina London Children's Hospital. Leber cognitio ambroasis minus four, uh, affecting approximately one in 40,000 newborns, severely limits vision, leaving individuals with only the ability to discern light from dark. For Khadija, this uh, diagnosis meant a life, of, uh, a life potentially sh shrouded in darkness. Before she even reached her fourth birthday, however, the innovative gene therapy offered a glimmer of hope. During the procedure, Khadija was injected with healthy copies of crucial uh, gene treatment designed to halt and even reverse the progression of her blindness. Led by renowned surgeon nu uh, Nuruban uh, Kumaran, the medical team at uh, Evelina London Children's Hospital embarked on this revolutionary journey to restore Khadija's sight. Although the technique is still in its experimental stages and not yet licensed for widespread use, the initial results have been nothing short of miraculous. Khadija's parents have already observed improvements in her vision, signaling a promising outcome for young girls' future. Uh, we're really pleased with how Khadija's surgery went, lead surgeon Nurban Kamar. Uh, uh, Kumaran told the mirror, her mother and father have already noticed an improvement in her vision, which is very promising. That's awesome. Uh, these are the things that, you know, <clears throat> is, is this is an amazing, amazing feat uh, to, to see this. So uh, I love I love this story. And I wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, sometimes these things happen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, that would be a good one. Brass monkey. Medical terms for words are hard with x-ray girl. Ooh, that's a good idea right there. Medical terms for words are hard. I like that. That's a good idea. Uh, I was going to actually ask her if she, like, if she knows how to speak Mandarin. We could do some Chinese words and stuff like that, or Mandarin words, if she has that. But medical terms, that's that's smart. Because those are words, too. <laughs> and I'm always like, what does that mean again? What does that say? Uh, good good suggestion. Um, this, uh, this, is, this next story <clears throat> is the highlighted story of the day. It's about a pooch named Hero. It's about, uh, she, yeah, she's Vietnamese, but I think she's told me she speaks Mandarin. I, I seem to remember that. Uh, but I have to ask her what she actually speaks again. Um, here we go. This next story is amazing. <clears throat> it's a doggy. This doggy saved a life. A dog named Hero saves owner's life for days of fighting off the cold and coyotes and getting help. Uh, this is, uh, man, when they say a dog is a man's best friend, this is the dog they're talking about right here. Look at this place that this poor man was trapped in. Uh, it is not a 
not a fun way to go. Uh, and this this dog saved his life. Uh, here, hey, this is the direction the dog was running towards me. A peaceful run with his dog Thursday morning turned into something else entirely for Curtis Dow. This dog came right up on him and grabbed him by the throat. I struggled with the dog for about 10 minutes trying oh my to get God. Him off my dog. The tussle left both Dal and his dog Jack nursing some wounds. Wow. He went back here to the outskirts of town to find the other dog and call police. Constable Austin Weersink was the first on scene. After I whistled, I heard a, a loud scream for help. So I was a little taken back with where this may have came from. Um, so I whistled again and the shriek came again and said, help, I'm down here. Hey, this is oh the God. area where the, the police department found found this gentleman. A 61-year-old man who police say had been stranded for two days, alone, injured and unable to move, with temperatures plunging as low as minus 17 degrees. He was behind this minus very, 17? like, five-foot tall um, bush of just grass and weeds and kind of laying on his back, um, and he was unable to get up. He was quite cold. He was shivering. Protecting him the whole time, the man's dog, who stayed with him, even fighting off coyotes, police say. For a dog oh to be in this God. situation and act the way it did and alert us and other people to the location he of his owner. Off coyotes. Um, to, if it could speak, just to say thanks so much and um, how much we appreciate what it did. You know, they, they say it's man's best friend for a reason. And the dog, if you can believe it, is named hero Aww. staff at the animal shelter now caring for him say he lived up to his name and i think it's just a testament to how loyal dogs are to their owners as for dal all is forgiven with the dog's <laughs> yeah i'm glad i went back out there proving oh that when God. it comes to man's best friend everyone needs a hero Aww. julia wong cbc news edmonton that's so sweet dude this guy got it's attacked my like this guy got attacked the by the dog and then he's like you know what like we gotta go figure out what's going on with this dog and then it turns out the poor owner was like very injured and the dog was trying to get help uh he just had to, he was like you know what i'm biting you like i need your attention <laughs> like you need to come over here uh amazing i love i love that dog good puppers that's right that's right. Uh, and thank you, Justin. Thank you so much for gifting five memberships to the chat. That is very sweet of you. Appreciate that. Uh, so cute. Good doggo. That's right. Uh, what a sweet, sweet dog. Saved a life. What's up, Boosh? How you doing? Good to see you. Uh, and you guys, uh, I'm sure you've heard that there was an earthquake um, in Taiwan, by the way. My heart goes out to everybody over there. Uh, and somebody sent me this video. Uh, and I thought, man, like, you know, without people like this, this is, uh, this is everything. Uh, it says, came, came across one of the most beautiful videos on the internet today from Taiwan captured during the earthquake. These on-duty nurses demonstrate the true definition of responsibility. May their tribe increase uh, a big salute to their courage. Uh, these are women who decided that they're not going to run away. Uh, and they're going to, instead, they're going to stand there and protect these babies. Uh, this is absolute, just these women are are amazing. Look at them. Hanging on to those babies. Instead of running for their own life. They're like, no, we got to protect these babies. That's really amazing. I love that. Heroes. I agree. They're heroes. Absolutely. In times of, uh, you know, darkness, sometimes you, you find light. Um, and then there's this story, which I think is really sweet. 
This is the um, definition of following your passion. I mean, this dude is really amazing. Oh, wait, that's not that's not the story. Sorry. Hang on. We're, we're, that, that guy's amazing, too. We'll go back to that. <laughs> but this guy's really, really amazing. Uh, Smet says, meet uh, Laverne Bister, 105-year-old eclipse chaser, excited to add the 13th to his list. Wow, this guy's so cool. His story is amazing. Here we go. Well, many people are flocking to the path of cosmic phenomenon, and this 105-year-old in Fort Worth is one of them. He's preparing to watch his 13th eclipse. Fox's Dion Anglin has the story. And I built that display case. Retired engineer, Aww. Laverne Beiser. I built that, I ground her land myself. Has built a lot of things, including his own telescopes. He built his I was own. In astronomy all my life, ever since high school. So this next thing likely won't surprise you. My first solar kit was 1963. Uh, a, I got a list of my on the table. It is that list, I love however, him. that just might. 1963, 1972, that means 79, 84, 88, 91, uh, 94. Mr. Beiser is 105 years old. Uh, 2012, Good for him. 20, 20, 2017. 2023. He's looking forward to April 8th. I've seen 12 of them. This will be my 13th. And he remembers them all thanks to photos and keepsakes. Amazing. He has memories of traveling the world with his two children and his late wife, Marion, to view the events he describes as... It's a fantastic thing to see. The first one was in Dover, Dover, Foxcroft, Maine. We drove on my vacation. I drove, I drove up there to see that you see one you want to see them all <laughs> and everybody yells hey look at that mr beiser who lives in fort worth says on april 8th he'll be in plano with his daughter over here i'm at the edge of the edge of the pattern it doesn't last very long over there they're closer to the middle it'll last two three or four minutes over there and though he's good at the tedious process of I building love that. a telescope, press your telescope down on the fits real good. He's happy this time. He won't need one. Uh, if it stays clear, you just keep watching it. You know, when it goes, you would use your glasses when it's partial eclipsed, but when it's total, take those off and look at it. And it's just something that's beautiful to see. Aww. It's, 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 it'll, it'll excite you. Dion Anglin. Fox News. That is so sweet. Um, it's just really sweet that he's been doing this for so long. He just loves uh he just loves this, and that's what he's been doing. And he's just been traveling and trying to see the eclipse. I love that. <laughs> Ian so far. It's really sweet hearing about it once, but I'm not sure I'd like to be carpooling with him for a long journey. <laughs> why? Uh, why you? Why you gotta be mean, Ian? Come on now, come on now. <laughs> as long as he's not like, as long as he's not driving, I guess. Like you gotta be the one driving. Uh, that's an achievement. That's definitely an achievement, though. Uh, now I accidentally pressed, pressed on this article before. So let's, uh, let's watch this one. This is hilarious. Man falls asleep for three hours while getting a haircut. Uh, now this is customer service. A loyal customer dozed off myth haircut at a barbershop in Quattara, Westfield, Australia. Instead of disturbing his peaceful slumber, the staff decided to allow the, him to rest undisturbed. The barber Jordan, uh, Magas Magasiva? Uh, shared a video and wrote, my boy Billy slept during his haircut, and we know he's no joker when it comes to a hard yakka worker. Hence, <laughs> hence why we let him sleep, because we know how hectic work and life gets. Uh, gave him an eye cover, too, just to shut, shut the lights off. Billy was more than happy to get a good rest in an in and didn't mind waking up with a smile for us. Shout out to all the hardworking men and women doing what they have to do to make ends meet. We must support each other on this journey. 
Uh, don't forget to rest and reset as we only get to enjoy this ride once. Cheers, guys. And here is the video. Yeah. I'm going to mute it, though, because the because of the thing. Hold on. Let me get closer here. Uh, no. What did I do? Go back. OK, we're going to we're going to watch this again. Sorry. Let's let's do this again. One more time. He's like asleep. Uh huh. There's his eyes and they cut, they put the towel. And then he woke up. He's like, "What's going on?" <laughs> Slum <laughs> Bye. That's funny. That's great. He just, uh, he slept well. Uh, the Boxing Historian, thank you for the two, says you're looking lovely today, Nina. Thank you. I appreciate that. I always take compliments. Thank you. <laughs> compliments are welcome. Uh, world's most class, uh, relaxing clip joint. I know, right? Uh, Charlene, oh, you don't have to do this. Thank you for the tans. As for the Japan fund, love you, Nina. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm used to cheersing uh, on Rumble with this. So cheers to you, Charlene. Thank you. The Japan fund, although I was like so scared the other day because they had... Um, when the Taiwan earthquake happened and I saw they had like a tsunami war warning in Japan. And I was like, imagine if I was there right now and then there was like a tsunami warning or something. I was like, that's scary. Like that's the one thing that's really scary about Japan. I'm like the, 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 um, the earthquakes and the, the tsunamis and stuff like that. It's like, oh, it's so scary. So, you, you know, when, when I go, I have to just like hope for the best. <laughs> like just pray, please. Please don't hit like just no no tsunamis, no earthquakes. Uh, but that was uh that was scary. Uh Ian, thank you so much for the 25. Says wait till he sees what they shaved into the back of his head. Oh no. <laughs> hey, he walked away. There was nothing there. <laughs> but that is a good you that's that's how you know that's a trusted place um, because they didn't do that because it's really easy to do something like that. Um, Shane G says Godzilla keeps the earth earthquakes away. I think he makes the earthquakes. Thank you again, uh, Ian and Charlene for that, for those uh, generous super chats, you guys really appreciate you guys. Thank you. It's Godzilla season, Nina. Look at you with your little brass monkey icon. Where's your little monkey? Oh, he's so cute. Brass monkey, look at the little monkey. It's so cute. Spike knows like what kind of icons I like now. I've noticed that you pick the cutest icons for Infinite Hope now. Don't think I haven't noticed. Charlene just gifted a membership to a lucky recipient uh, in the chat. Thank you, Charlene. Very generous. Monkeys. Love monkey. This brass monkey. Good human. Um, there it is. Daily. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think I haven't noticed what you're doing, sir. Uh, I approve. Earthquakes release Godzilla from his prison. Wow. I love all these series. By the way, I cannot wait to go see the new Godzilla Kong movie. I'm so excited. Uh, I'm either going tonight or tomorrow, but it's happening. It's, it's happening. Charlene, don't you ever say stuff like that. 
I cannot even believe that you super chatted. Don't. Thank you. Thank you. Really didn't have to. Um, you don't ever be sorry. Any any donation that you give just means means the world to me. Thank you. Uh, look at this thing's face. Look at this thing's face. Dog tore into a cereal box but gets caught with sugar puffs all over, all over her <laughs> This picture cracked me up. And I was like, you know what? This is like the most basic story, but I have to share it. I have to share it because <laughs> imagine you walk into your house and this is what you walk <laughs> you walk into the <laughs> It's like such a basic story, but I love, I love the picture. <laughs> it was a me, mom. Oh my god. Oh my god. You <laughs> say such a good boy. Oh my god. Uh, the story goes, a guilty pup was left covered with sugar puffs after she tore into the cereal box. A hilarious moment was caught on camera by Heather Hunt. Uh, coming home to discover her two-year-old Zukon <laughs> crumpet uh, completely covered from head to toe. For the love of God, who left the cereal cupboard open? Exclaimed the 51-year-old as she arrived on the scene of the, uh, uh, on the, scene of the crime. Uh, I came back in from shopping and it was all over the floor everywhere uh said heather the sugar puff cereal is covered honey it's in cut is covered in honey so excuse me it stuck to her fur like a, a like tar <laughs> that's oh that's so gross uh getting it out of crumpets fur proved impossible i tried to wet them but it turned turned them into a wallpaper paste when I finally decided to take her to the groomers, it, it took them nearly three hours to wash her, cut all of the cereal out, and make her look like a dog again. A completely different dog. Uh, this is this is the first time Crumpet has gotten into mischief. She's always getting into trouble. I can't leave a grocery bag unattended as uh, they'll straight uh, they'll they'll be straight into the ham. Um, they drive me insane. But I love them to death. Uh, that's literally every uh, pet mom's life. All the pet moms out there understand this. Because, I mean, my cat's done some ish, I tell you. Um, Russell Hall is my hero. Hello. Thank you for the $1.99. says, tsunamis happen when Godzilla's fart. When Godzilla farts. <laughs> Is that, is that what happens? Wait, so this isn't Russell Hall. This is Russell Hall is my hero. That's so funny that there's there's somebody named Russell Hall is my hero. I thought it was Russell Hall. That's funny. I love sugar puffs. I've never had sugar puffs. <laughs> Russell is training an apprentice. <laughs> oh, no. We're all doomed. <laughs> Always two there are. If you're a Star Wars fan... You will get this reference. Uh, Russell Hall, there he is for two bucks, says, I help a lot of people, Nina. I'll have you know. <laughs> well, it seems like you definitely have a fan. I mean, why? I didn't know you were black. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, 
Oh, he's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. He is cuckoo for Sugar Puffs. Hashtag the hero. <laughs> oh, boy, Russell. This guy's here to tell me that I'm mid. You spelled your wrong. That's apostrophe U R R E. You are. You should watch Words Are Hard. Maybe I'll teach you how to spell. <laughs> um, okay. Next story. I just saw that in the middle. <laughs> Boo, ban him. No, it's okay. It's all right. It's all good. People are allowed to have their opinions. Uh, I've never had sugar puffs. <laughs> oh, that's, that's funny. Wow, thanks, Doc Brewski, for that comment. Um, I'm not highlighting that. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> uh, all right. Here we go. Uh, next story. This is a this is a raccoon's tail. Little trash panda story. I love trash pandas. They're really cute. So we're going to watch the story from the dodo. Um, here we go. Wait, where is it? Hang on. Why did I not get this? There it is. There it is. Uh, every year, this wild raccoon brings her babies to meet her human friend. This is so cute. Let's watch it. Wow. When I moved into the house, I always got this oh. feeling like someone was looking at me. And it was Roxy. Hi. 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 The previous owners are like, oh yeah, we feed this raccoon. It's okay. Oh. I was like, oh my gosh, they weren't kidding. I love the oh dodo. God. I had no idea what kind of friendship we'd end up having. Come here, it's okay. Look at the little blueberry water. She that's, was skeptical that's awesome. of me at first. You really shouldn't feed wildlife. No, you shouldn't. Calm down. I oh, only do the it dog's like, I what? Live here and she's already been human dependent. You don't want it. <laughs> How are you, little picky raccoon? So cute. She didn't know me, but now oh, she, she literally sits out here and hangs out with me. Rossi! She lives in the woods surrounding me and only comes to my house. <laughs> I realized I think she might be pregnant. You guys, a baby is here. They're in the tree. Bring your baby down here. Rox, bring her to me. When Roxy first introduced her baby to me, oh my god, it was such a special moment. I could tell just how much she trusted me. Ah! There's babies. There's raccoon <gasps> babies. Oh my god. Oh, Roxy so has nice. a litter every single year, and it's become sort of a tradition at this point when they visit. <laughs> oh, there's a little Chinese. <laughs> Little tiny babies. She has four. They all climbed the tree. That's so cute. Even Roxy's daughter, Penelope, introduced her own baby to us last year. When I had my child, it meant so much to be able to return the favor and introduce her to Roxy. She gets so excited when she sees her come to the door. Aww. Or even when we're playing outside.
I don't have it. There you go. I trust Roxy the most, so she really only interacts with her, and of course I'm always there to supervise. Aww. It's surreal that we're both mothers now, but it only makes our friendship that much more special. <laughs> I love this story. It was so cute. I love the Dodo. <clears throat> the Dodo is uh, one of the best channels on YouTube. Seriously. Um, <clears throat> this is hilarious. Before you know it, she's got 50 trash panels on the back. <laughs> she's like... She has like a litter every year, man. That is totally what's going to happen. And yes, you're not supposed to feed wild animals, but clearly people were already feeding this one. So, hey, it is what it is. Some people do feed them. Um, sometimes uh, I am I'm against feeding wild animals, though. <laughs> David. Damn, David. <laughs> I can't, I cannot highlight that. Is that actually, is that actually true? Trash Pandas is the name of our local baseball team. <laughs> oh no, Nina's about to start crying. I wasn't crying, I was laughing at this one. This is so cute. I only cried on the... The other story. Uh, and over on Rumble, we got a Rumble rant. Uh, thank you so much for the dollar. It says Professor Savage Dad. I like your name. You have a love. You're a lovely lady, Nina. Ignore these blind men. Thank you. I appreciate that, and I will appreciate that. <clears throat> How you doing, Stump Brat? You know that they're really smart. You could do that. You could be that person could probably train that raccoon. Yes, Huntsville out trash pandas minor leagues. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> if you feed them, they always come back. I'm swamped with giant eagles and Bigfoot. Uh, wow. Bigfoot. My goodness. Okay, this is really cute. <clears throat> um, not all raccoons are mean. <clears throat> Some of them get a bad rep. Raccoons are sweet. They can be sweet. They just, uh, you know, they always have to fend for themselves. And they're called trash pandas. <laughs> so... They're like, you know, some of them can be mean and some of them are really great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what percent of that. No. No. That's not true. Um, this next story is really sweet. It's about a doggy finding their owner. Uh, it says, incredible moment. A long lost dog picks up its owner's scent in a crowded city. Now, mind you, this is a really sweet story, but my God, how stinky is this guy? <laughs> the, the dog picked up their scent. I mean... Either stinky or like really like like perfumey. Like, is it a person that wears a lot of cologne or perfume? Because that is that's funny. In a heartwarming tale that melt 
could melt even the coldest of hearts. That's you, Russell Hall. Uh, a long, a long lost dog in China experienced an unforgettable moment of reunion with its owner and a bustling city square caught on CCTV footage. The scene captured the sheer magic of a bond between man and a, uh, a between man and a man's best friend. Uh, picture this. You've experienced the gut wrenching despair of losing your beloved furry friend. This has happened to me, and it's one of the worst feelings ever. Uh, days turned into weeks and hope begins to fade as you grapple with the possibility that they may never return. Then, as if by a stroke of fate amidst the chaos of a crowded city square, you catch a glimpse of something familiar, an unmistakable scent of your loyal companion. For one for fortunate owner, this implorable scenario became a reality as the lost dog caught wind of the owner's scent and uh, it embarked on a determined quest through the uh, bustling square following the nose until it led uh, to a nearby uh, wrestling booth. There, in a moment that could only be described as pure magic, owner and pet were, re uh, were joyously reunited. Uh, here is that video. This is very cute. Keep an eye on the dog. My little little doggy. Oh, look, he, he found him. He found him! <laughs> oh. That's so cute. One more time for the kids in the back. So there's the doggy. That is really cute. This dog's been like homeward bound, like looking for the owner for like two weeks. This little tiny doggy. And then he found him. I'm so cute. <laughs> oh my god that is so adorable i love that so much he's the goodest boy give this overload i love those kind of stories um a baby pitbull says, I take my German Shepherd into the stores. Everybody always wants to pet him. Best way to pick up girls. I always say that. Uh, dudes with dogs. <laughs> like all the chicks that are like, oh, can I pet your dog? That's an icebreaker, my friend. Uh, this would be me as well, Ian. I would ransack the city if my dog was missing. I would like not rest there would be no rest until the dog is found. I would 100%. There would just be no rest. <laughs> see? Oh, hell yeah. This little pit bull is a chick magnet. See? See? What's up, 200 Watt Studios for two bucks? It's happy Infinite Good Friday, Dina. Thank you so much, my friend. I hope you're doing well. Oh, Tommy. Oh, that's so cute. Wait, why are you trying to pick up chicks, Tommy? You are married. <laughs> I'm just joking. Oh. Um, this, uh, this little video here was sent to me by someone and, uh, it's from a TikTok account. So I'm pretty sure I can show this without getting claimed. Uh, but I was dying when I watched this. Uh, this kid is, uh, definitely me. Uh, he gets back for a reason. He's <laughs> room to room to run. Here we go. Come on, food. I need you. Hurry up. Come on. I need you. 
You got me. I need you to take care of that problem right there. It's too big. You gonna you gonna hit it? Get back, get back, get back. Okay. Get Don't back. Y'all get back. How are y'all fully jump? See that leg moving? I see. You see that leg move? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to shift like Handle it like a man, Spooder. You got this. Got <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Come on, Spooder. I need you. Hurry up. Come on. I need you. I got you. Oh, my you got God. Me. That's too funny. I need you to take care of that problem right there. It's too big. It's too big. It's too big. You gonna hit, you gonna hit it? Get back, get back, get back. Okay, don't miss it. Y'all get back. How are y'all going jump? <laughs> see that leg moving? I see it. You see that leg move? <laughs> Handle it like a man, Spooty. You got this. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Come on. That was too funny, man. The kid's like, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> that would be me. Oh, Tommy, thank you for the member message. Member for 12 months. Wow. Wow. It's been 12 months. What's up, dude? It says an attempt was made. <laughs> he tried. Uh, he tried. <laughs> <sighs> Oh my God, that was so funny. I was dying. That kid. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> Stand back. <laughs> he was like, Stand back. I got this. And then, like, nope. <laughs> Just runs away. Uh, that was too good. That was too good. Oh my goodness. Um, okay, that was basically my last story, but I did see he ran far too. Yeah, he was like, he, was, he didn't even look back. Oh my God. Uh, I saw it. I saw, <laughs> I'm still thinking of that video. That was too funny. Um, I saw this clickbait story, which we're going to have to click on and, and watch. Um, I don't, this, this does look like one of those channels that it's going to get me a, a wreck though. Hold on. Um, there's another clickbait video. I have to click on this as well. Uh, let's see. Okay. That one less. So I might be able to watch that one. Uh, Charlene, thank you for the 17 month member message. Thank you. Says there's no way in hell. <laughs> I'd have attempted that. Good for him for trying. <laughs> yeah. I just love how heroic he was. And he's like, stand back. <laughs> and then he like just throws the the broom and runs. Uh that was too funny. That was amazing. Oh my God. Uh, Ram Bam, thank you for the five. Says at my last workplace, I literally was the spider wrangler. Everyone came to me to deal with them, including a male colleague. Wow. Um, I I would probably go to you as well. Really, like, please, please get rid of that. Please, I need your assistance. <laughs> this is why, like this. This is actually the reason that women will always need men is to get rid of bugs <laughs> and spiders. This, this is it. This is the reason. We will always need men for this. Men are doing the Lord's work when it comes to getting rid of bugs. Uh, Justin, hello. Thank you for the $20. Says, hi, Nina. First live stream of yours I've caught. Is it always uh, this cutesy? Not sure if I can deal. Um, this show, yes. Uh, this, this specific show, the Friday show, is all about good news, 
cute animals, like the, this infinite hope show, cute animals, just good news, trying to focus and bringing the positivity back into the world. My Wednesday show, which is now a Rumble exclusive, is a totally different show where I cover objective reality that is not so cute. <laughs> Uh, and I actually took, I, I used to simulcast on YouTube, but I took it to Rumble only because that's the place that we can talk uh, without me fearing that I'm going to get banned off YouTube or losing this channel. Uh, but uh, so that might be more up your alley. Uh, I also do another show on toxic, uh, it's called Toxic Femininity on Midnight's Edge on Monday nights. That's on the Midnight's Edge channel. Uh, and that shows specifically about mostly like entertainment news and, uh, you know, a lot of clown world stuff as well. Uh, a lot of entertaining, like entertainment news and about toxic emails and things like that. Uh, but this show I created because I wanted to, I wanted to bring positivity to the world uh, because of my Wednesday show. Because I talk about so much weird stuff on Wednesday uh, that I'm like, I, I was being... Uh, I started this show during the pandemic because I was really incredibly depressed. Uh, so I was like, I need to, I need to bring some of that, uh, I, like you know, pull myself out of this negative feedback loop. Uh, and I and I made this show. Uh, but uh, of course, there's always gaming streams as well. Uh, there's definitely less cute language in there. Uh, I get very spicy in the gaming streams. You might enjoy the Helldivers streams that I'm doing. Uh, yes, uh, you see a very different side of me when I'm gaming. <laughs> uh, Tomby would know because Tomby's seen me game. I'm a pretty toxic gamer. Let's just say that. Um, but I still appreciate your very generous super chat, though. Thank you for thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, we got Phil here. What's going on? Uh, Phil, TMNT for a member for 10 months says, hey, Nita, how dare you look beautiful? <laughs> Hope you're having a good day. Some may say you're like the sun, both beautiful and bright. Oh, Nina the best. Oh, thank you, man. That is so sweet. So sweet. Uh, Doc Brewski for Doll Night and said, Dog fell asleep watching tagged on X uh, with Pig. Oh my gosh, we're gonna have to. We're breaking news. Cute, cute dog pick incoming. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, look at the little pepper. Look at this. This is so cute. Oh, live on the scene. A doc's pup asleep. It's very nice. <laughs> I love that. That's so cute. Thank you very much. He's a good boy. Oh, okay. So you're a fan of the gaming. Awesome. Watch all the Conan streams. I'm a fan. Awesome. Yeah. Right now we're uh we're doing a bit of a hell divers. We're on a bit of a hell divers kick. Um okay, you guys want to see something funny? This okay, now this I don't usually do this on Infinite Hope, but I thought this was actually funny. Because it's it's like hell divers related, but I'm I'm gonna share it just because it was it was so funny. I was like, is this guy like an automaton? Like this is so funny. Um, but I just I, I just couldn't I just couldn't believe he even tweeted this. I was like, is this a like you know what? Let let's let's take a poll, I guess on on this on this tweet. Um. Uh, <laughs> It's Gail's turn. <laughs> That's me and uh, playing Baldur's Gate with Tommy. Um, 
this tweet, let's vote. Do you guys think this is a bot or do you think this is a real person? Do you think this is a bot or do you think this is a real person? And then we'll go back to our regular schedule programming of looking at cute animals. Uh, so this is it. So I, last night, Yellow Flash, Anna and Raging Rhino and I were playing this at, uh, Tom B hopped in for a minute. Uh, and I, and I put this tweet out, spreading democracy, hell divers too with Yellow Flash. Uh, and this is, uh, this is the icon that I've made for it. And then this guy, Tim comes in and he goes, democracy has always resulted in oppression of minorities. Always. Every single time. Stop the spread of democracy by itself and spread of a constitutional federal republic. You sound ignorant when you talk about spreading democracy. Do you mean spreading liberal libertarianism? The rights of individuals to do as they please as long as they are not harming another, other people? Do you mean the spread of egalitarianism, the idea that men and women are created equal in the sight of God, or do you mean the spread of liberty and freedom? Democracy has never, ever supported those things. It has always resulted in the oppression of the minority as it is, as it is right, right, right now. Now, this is good news because, I mean, this guy has to have a sense of humor, right? <laughs> I mean, come on. I was laughing. It has to be a bot, right? But 100% completely missing the context of the original post. Right? Like, I mean, there is no way that guy wasn't a bot. He had to be an automaton. That guy is a bug or an automaton. For sure. Uh, it was really funny. Like, I was like, <laughs> like, I mean, this guy has no sense of humor at all. Um. Wow. Russell Hall for two bucks says, I thought democracy was just a euphemism for vagina. I think you think everything is a, a is a euphemism for vagina. But that's just you being special, Russell. Or just clueless to games. I mean, that is possible, too. That is possible, too. Uh, that was really, like, really, really, really... <laughs> That's really um, off topic with regards to infant health. We don't usually cover stuff like that, but I wanted to cover it just in case I forget. Uh, I just thought it was funny and everybody could laugh at how crazy the bots are on on uh, Twitter now. <laughs> if it is a bot, I don't know. Uh, so back to your regular schedule programming. Um, this is, I think we've covered this donkey before, uh, but I, I love the donkeys. They're so cute. Uh, donkey goes crazy for four legged pirate chicken. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Hold on. This, I think this is the same donkey that got the unicorn that... Hello, donkey. What are you doing over there? Come on. I got you a new chicken. It's from Brian from Wisconsin. He's got a new chicken, guys. Yeah. Oh, you got to look at him. He's got your face here. Oh, I got to show you. That. It's a pig leg pirate. He put a tattoo on his neck. He's so cute. He's like, give me the chicken. Oh. This is clickbait, by the way, guys. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> What's a good one in there? 
my stomach oh my god oh Get my god all right you like that chicken that was amazing That's a good chicken. <laughs> oh my god did you guys see his <laughs> i was dying Oh my god. This is why the clickbait can be really good sometimes because that was my genuine reaction. Like this is what happens when I I watch the stuff before you you guys don't see genuine reactions sometimes. <laughs> That's me right now. My I feel like I got an ab work. <laughs> oh my god. Did you see the donkey's face? That was so funny. Oh, my God. Yes, yeah, same here. I think it's the same donkey uh, that she gave him, like, the unicorn that one time. We we played uh, the videos of, of him getting new toys. He's great. That channel's great. Uh, fant <laughs> fantastic. Uh, this just bringing laughter to people's lives is uh, doing the Lord's work. That's that's what that lady's doing. It's a pit boy. Oh, pit bull puppy. That's so cute. I love that. Adorable. Can donkeys have ADHD? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I don't know. Um, okay, next, next, uh, next story. This was the other clickbait story. Journey to be, uh, to belonging orphaned baby elephant walks with new herd. Uh, a beautiful scene of, uh, in interspecies mingling took place in the hoed spirit elephant rehabilitation and development herd. South Africa's first dedicated elephant orphanage. Uh, seen here is Fabeni, the elephant, and his sheep comrades. Oh, Lemmy and Spotty. They're friends. Look how cute. Oh, that's so cute. This is new herd. Oh, hold on. Let's see. What is this? Oh my gosh. They're friends now. That's his new herd. Oh my gosh. That's so adorable. This is new friends. They could make a movie about uh, they, yes, they should. They should make a movie about this. That's adorable. Imagine how cute it's gonna be when like he's massive, like he's like a massive elephant, and they're like walking next to him. Aww. He's going to be like a massive elephant. And they're going to be his friends. Uh, Fabeni's story. Fabeni was rescued in November last year after being separated from his herd. The elephant calf wandered into the uh, yard of a woman 
living near the Kruger Park, starving, injured, and dehydrated her sprung into action. Oh, that's that's super sad, but I'm so glad they rescued him. About two months later, Heard attempted to introduce Fabini to the mother elephant in hopes that she might take him as her own. As her own. We're holding our breaths as Fabeni rushed over to Lundy for the meeting. Lundy surrounded him immediately, protect protectively reversing towards him and touching his trunk with the, her own. It was an absolutely heartwarming introduction. Heard said the meeting was a huge success. Oh, that's good. She's got an adopted mother now. You can follow Fabeni's story along with those of many other rescued elephants on Herd's social media pages. Herd's mission is to provide and care for the rehabilitation of orphan elephants. Oh my God, I want to click on this so bad. Oh my God, we're still going to get claimed probably. Oh my God, I'm, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be watching these. Oh, look at that. Little baby. Oh my God. Okay. I'm going to put this link in the chats. So if you guys are interested in watching these cute videos of these amazing animals and subscribing to the herd channel, you are welcome to. There's so many ads. Hang on a second. Ooh, I have a sneeze coming. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Maybe. That's a weird feeling. You know, when you have to sneeze. Oh, why is my thing like this? Okay, here we go. Okay. Here is the um, YouTube channel for the elephant. Yeah, she got a mom now. I put the link in the chat. Uh, and here it is on Rumble as well. So if you guys want to watch the elephant and the new mom. Uh, you can, uh, because that's uh, that seems like an amazing story. Also, I recommend subbing to that channel uh, because then there'll be lots of cute elephant stories. Uh, I also highly recommend that everybody here, I'm sure you guys already are, but definitely make sure you subscribe to the Dodo. The Dodo has amazing animal stories all the time, and they do really good work there as well. Uh, so make sure you guys subscribe there. Um, here is a uh, unlimited power, uh, a member for three months. Thank you. Says, yo, Nina, what are you, uh, what are you doing for the eclipse? You know, I don't even know when the eclipse is or what time I, it said in that story, but I forgot. Uh, let's see the eclipse, April, April 8th. Um, okay. It really depends. I would have to check out and see what time it's going to be um, around where I am and where it's going to, like, if, if we're even going to be able to see it kind of thing. Let's see. Um, April 8th, partial solar. Uh, we, we're going to get the partial version. Partial solar eclipse. I'm, I'm looking at it right now. You know what I've always, uh, I keep forgetting to do is get like eclipse goggles because um, you need those to like actually look at the eclipse and I don't have them. And I keep telling myself like every eclipse, I'm like, I'm going to get one of those. Um, and then I, I didn't again. Maybe if I order one today, it's not going to come in three days. I have to get one like off Amazon or something. Uh, Eclipse Path at, there you go. There's Darren dropping them links. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. Uh, let's see. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. That's a cool website, Darren. That tells you where and where, where it's going to be. So 
long story short, to answer your question, I don't have any plans yet. <laughs> Uh, but if I see it, I see it. I'll, I'll try and see if I can get some new goggles. As for the rest of your message, it says, also, what movies are you excited for? Definitely Godzilla and Kong, the new one. Uh, check the Wild Robot by DreamWorks. Looks fun. Uh, Wild Robot by DreamWorks. Let's see. What is that? Uh, TV. Or no, is it, is it it's a movie? Marks. Let's see. Ooh, this looks cute. The wild robot. Uh, what's it about? Upcoming animated science fiction adventure survival drama film based on the book series by the same name. Oh, looks cute. I'm gonna have to check that out. I love DreamWorks. DreamWorks usually makes really good stuff. Finally, that sneeze. Uh, DreamWorks makes really good stuff usually. Oh, here, let me share my screen so you guys can see what I was looking up. The robot kind of looks cute, even though I hate robots. Here it is. The wild robot. We're not going to watch the trailer here, but I'll watch the trailer on my own. Check it out, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now, what movies am I looking forward to other than Godzilla? I mean, I don't even know what else is coming out recently. I should probably know this. these things. I'm trying to think. I was looking forward to The Monkey King, and now I'm not so much anymore because of some things I heard about it. Um... What got me excited? There was a movie that got me really excited recently. I was like, ooh, this looks really good. Ooh, I definitely want to see the new Guy Ritchie movie with Henry Cavill. That I definitely want to see. Um, ooh, I want to see the new, like, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes or whatever. That looks good. Uh, I'd watch that. Uh, yeah, it, you know that's a that's a good question. What movies are not remakes or sequels? Uh, that's uh, that's a good question. There's a there's a lot that's like a like that now. Uh, it's just that so many of them have become remakes or whatever. Like when I heard like Happy Gilmore Two was being made, I was like. Just stop it. Just stop it. <clears throat> um, Cavatinius says Chris Gore said the first omen was good is good. I don't know what that is. Yeah, that one. The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. The Guy Ritchie one. Um, I I did not. I, I've I've heard it's really good though. I've heard good things about it. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. <laughs> Russell Hall. Oh my god. Uh how am I green here also? Somebody gifted you a membership. Somebody must have gifted you a membership. How sweet of them. Um, but anyways, that's uh, I guess that's for now. That's what my answer is going to be. Uh, the Henry Cavill movie and uh, the gentleman and he warfare thing and Godzilla. Can't think of anything else off the top of my head. Um. Oh yeah, love that. <laughs> it's not easy being green. Oh, Henry Cavill does love turtles. He's so 
<laughs> oh, I love that. Back here live at the Waterfront Village with my friend, the zombie, Jonathan. You're looking good. Jonathan just got an awesome face paint job. What do you think? I like turtles. All right. Oh, I did see Dune, too. It was all right. It wasn't as good as the first one, I thought. Um. Okay. Let's end this show here. I think this is uh, this has gone long enough. Send that picture to Anna. I think I've sent it to her before. I think she's seen it. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much, everybody, for joining me today. You guys are fantastic. Special thanks to those of you who super chatted, became a member, gifted memberships, all that good stuff. Thank you for supporting the channel the way that you do. It helps me do this and play video games and all that good stuff. The, the entertainment I bring for you is because of you. So thank you for helping me make it happen. Uh, if you are watching still, please make sure you comment down below, whether you're on Rumble, YouTube, or whatever. Smash the like comment 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 because it tells the algorithm that you enjoy this show especially uh on youtube or rumble it's not so much on x even though we're on live uh but yeah it, it really does matter on these platforms so leave a comment let me know what you thought of the show how your day went if you uh like spike's new icon he changed it changed it again uh all that good stuff thank you again everybody you guys are so cool uh and i will see you next time but before i go make sure you practice empathy be kind to yourselves be kind to one another and always remember to have infinite hope and if you don't that's okay i'll have it for you till next time everybody bye